Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another live stream of Shadowverse. Today is November 11th, which apparently on top of being U.S. Veterans Day is Singles Day because 11-11 are all the number one, which, okay, I guess in some weird way the number one is a single digit number, but I don't think the number one in my mind would have converted to single uh four times over um but i guess that is a weird mixture of semantics and and mathematics which almost certainly any mixture of language and math leads to a level of confusion that needs to be sorted out by all involved um, I looked at the best time to stream through the YouTube, uh, TubeBuddy plugin. For me, it would have been about 9 a.m. That's where it says that would be, like, the best time for me to stream. That's not going to happen, clearly, as we're starting at 2 in the afternoon central time. Uh, that, that's just not any point, I think. Or my sleep schedule would, and my insomnia would actually allow for that. Uh, I could potentially try fairly hard to, uh, to stream at 9, but it would almost certainly be by waking up at 3 and then being, like, nearly asleep and falling asleep while streaming. And... Last thing any YouTuber needs is to to be sleepy or sound low energy. Um, which kind of feel like I'm sounding that way today. Uh, I'm definitely having a lot of pain still in my hip. And I, I swear I spent like 10 minutes just going, Hey, can I move these cushions on this seat this way, this way, this way? Like, just just as I'm opening tabs and trying to get the news, which, again, not a ton of news, but that seems to never really matter. Um, but yeah, mo moving the chair forward, moving the chair backward, it's just, it's just been quite a painful mess already. Uh, for the accountability section, I was heavily playing Portal Stories Mel. Let's see, we need Shadowcraft, Portalcraft, Havencraft, and Bloodcraft. Let's see if we can do that. I got... I spent one day and got a few more treasure chests. Because I think there probably is a couple of rewards you get as you work through this. But you very well may have to just play every single day to to actually get those rewards and and they're just card backs and, and emblems and things that less and less I care about yeah yeah I was playing portal stories Mel I was enjoying it for quite a lot of time uh, for a free community mod it's like five or six good at hours and then I hit about three Act 4 of 5 act puzzles near the end that are just, like, really complicated. And I don't know if that's... I just, at that point, was too sleepy and my brain was not thinking right. Or if the puzzles just at the end needed a little bit more playtesting compared to the puzzles at the beginning. Uh, Portal Stories Mel is definitely trying to have you solve puzzles in a way that would have never been allowed in Portal 2. Uh, there's a lot of broken rooms with a lot of places that look like you might be able to just shoot a portal outside of the room and escape. And there's enough instances of things like that happening that it, it is a viable option. Uh, there's when they started introducing the turret guns, uh, there was definitely puzzles where 
it felt like you are just supposed to hold a cube in front of you and crouch down and let the turret gun shoot the cube in front of you while you run up and knock them down or like i i have yet in the two or three puzzles that do have turret guns run into a single instance where it made any logical sense to to outthink uh the turret guns and in all fairness there's a certain level of truth that that happens also in Portal, Portal 1 and Portal 2. There's a lot of places where the turret guns are easier to to get rid of by rushing than by trying to figure out where you're supposed to put a portal. Um, but the big difference there would be in Portal 2, I believe you have a room with lots of different turrets that can shoot you before you can get down the hallway and above each of those turrets is a place to place a portal and there's a bunch of boxes uh cubes to drop on top of them and knock them over it, even in in the official portal 2 game that wasn't done particularly well but it uh it definitely improved its it, it improved the experience uh, compared to Portal Stories Metal, where there were, really was just nothing, uh, nothing at all that that you could have done. Hmm. Um, have I been doing anything else besides playing Portal Stories Metal? Hmm. Not really. I've got a little side project that's been going to be distracting me for pretty much the entire month of November, so I'm just going to get less progress in general. Still need to upload videos, as always. Still need to schedule videos, as always. Still made no progress uh, on having the time to... to deal with a script to automate that process um, during your turn do deal any damage to your leader to the enemy leader instead nice Deal two damage here. My compensation of Above that. Hey, check this out. Your you're in my way. My Take that out. Dry. If I could play Bloody Mary and then do some other things to do damage to myself that would be helpful but i'd need something that would do a lot of damage hmm i'm a little off i would say also in the fact that i just don't know what uh i don't know what the next game is that i'm gonna play And it feels like I should probably know what the, that is. Like, it should be more explained. Uh, I think we talked about a game called 13, and I saw a reviewer, YouTuber, who, who reviewed the 13 remaster. And they said, he said basically that they ruined, ruined everything that would have made 13 good. Um in the remaster for no real reason and they changed the cg graphics from the original game uh, both games end at the exact same cliffs cliffhanger it seems like they didn't really in the remake make any new audio or um or anything like that so it, it doesn't seem like it's a good offering 
at all. There might be a good argument, though, to... to potentially buy the original 13, which is like five bucks. But it's a Ubisoft game that ends on a cliffhanger that's a, a shooter. Um, it has very little relevance. So it, it's just like really, really questionable why Ubisoft would have even greenlit a remake of a, a game like that other than to just hold on to the copyright and and or try to get a cheap buck. Uh, I think you would probably would have had some... I'm going to just try Bloodcraft again. You probably would have had some interesting competition had Borderlands come out, Borderlands 1 come out, and shown itself to be a massive success. That's when Ubisoft should have said, oh, okay, you know what, we're going to... We're going to remake, not... Uh, well, no, we're going to remaster, not remake 13. And we're going to start development on a 13-2 game. But they didn't do that. And since they haven't done that, and we're already up to Borderlands 3 at this point, Borderlands has completely owned the market on that comic booky, cell shaded art style. And nobody's tried to compete with that because it just really goes to show how much of the video game industry uh, ooh, that's a label you don't see very often uh, that's like when you win five games in a row with take two um, uh, yeah, th there's video game developers and publishers are just so incredibly sheepish in that they just follow whatever is the top leading game, and it has literally for generations just pushed everybody to make Halo clones and Call of Duty clones left and right, and not not try to do anything unique or interesting. <clears throat> But yeah, if 13, I suppose if I see 13 actually, the, the remake of 13 does get some better reviews from other people, I might consider it, put it back into consideration, but at the current moment, I don't think so. Hang, hanging on a hitch, uh, on, a, on a cliffhanger is a problem, and certainly, um, uh, making a less quality of product is definitely a pro problem also. There is already The Darkness and The Darkness 2, which is a much more relevant game. Uh, that doesn't have comic book art. Instead, it has a more realistic art designed based on a comic book story. And it ends on a cliffhanger too, but it is way more relevant because people actually played and liked the darkness um, my so yeah it would make totally w way more sense uh, it also kind of makes sense on a separate situation now that i am playing portal stories mel that that would be a a perfect like transition point to say hey maybe i should go back and play half-life one i've never played it in my life um i own it uh, i probably own half-life 2 and any other half-life 2 spin-off things since i think i own all the valve games anyways Evolved person is in play. Deal one damage to one enemy. This is God's word. And then evolve. Go. Go. <laughs> to the word. 
and then play that. Then we can attack that. Then we can go ahead and attack that. Then in the turn. Yeah, but I don't know if that's really what's going to happen. There, there's plenty of other games that I have at a higher priority than playing Half-Life 1. It, it's really hard to justify playing Half-Life 1 just to get into the huge mess of then, well, he has Half-Life 2. Plus, a lot of people are definitely going to laugh at me playing Half-Life 1 and knowing absolutely nothing about the game. Plus, it's an incredibly old game. I, I would much prefer somebody gift me Black Mesa. And th that would be the motivation factor, certainly, is to, to spotlight Half-Life 1 and go, Hey, this is Half-Life 1. I've never played Half-Life 1. So I'm going to come from a very weird perspective as I now ignore Half-Life 1 and play Black Mesa. I'm just damaging myself like crazy. Well, I suppose there's no reason to elongate us any any stream, so we'll just go through the news and and then we'll be done for today. Here we go. We have a game on Steam called It's Not About the End. I suppose I should mention that somebody commented on my channel. It seems like my channel has gotten a small boost. Although it doesn't seem like the massive number of views that watched Castle Crashers 1 were immediately then suggested Castle Crashers 2. Um, this looks like this is probably a kind of walking simulator story game. And at a certain point, I might get bored of these, but if they stay cheap enough and if they get well reviewed, I'm willing to give them a chance. This is English and Portuguese Brazil. Um, so, yeah, getting a small boost. And so somebody commented on my channel that they, they first commented, uh, can I use this with credit? And then they changed that comment to, to I will use this with credit. And legally, I should probably have said nothing, but I'm like, whatever. I'm not going to sue somebody if they steal my YouTube content. YouTube might sue them because you are that's the whole uh, DMCA uh, complaint against YouTube DL uh, GitHub file, which I haven't talked about because it's not super video game related. Um, but you're n not allowed and theoretically you agreed to to the terms of YouTube that you would not download YouTube content and use for any other way and that's the only way anybody would ever be able to use the footage from YouTube in a good way I suppose uh, at a certain level you could do like what I do with the web peak and and just have a YouTube video playing live but even that is almost certainly against the terms and service of YouTube and its copyright infringement for whatever copyright I own from from the, the unique individual footage I create playing someone else's copyrighted games. And he gets into a huge mess there, uh, for sure. Uh, but having gone into many rants about copyright that it's pro should be obvious to any content creator any small content creator that you get absolutely no benefit and protection from, from copyright because like most of legal systems you cannot be protected by a legal system unless it is a criminal offense and there's a government funded prosecutor willing to to protect your rights or you're a rich person who can hire a lawyer to protect your rights and spend tens if not hundreds of thousands of dollars so i said sure why not 
because why do I care? It's it's better to take the good PR for something somebody somebody is gonna do, and frankly, there's probably dozens of people who've taken at least one of my videos. Um, like it's it's definitely not kind, certainly to take other people's content. It's not necessary to take other people's content. There's nothing a small YouTube content creator is going to do that's going to uh, that's going to be so unique that you couldn't replicate it. Um, and frankly, the idea of somebody doing commentary on someone's commentary of a video game is is a ridiculous thought. Um, it, it would be much kinder to simply link to someone's YouTube channel. And I've seen that happen before where some weird, uh, news website that maybe is just there to, to get ads, ad views, just puts a direct link to my gameplay on their page, uh, and embed it, which you can do that and are frankly encouraged by YouTube to, to use embed links and share videos. Uh, the difference there is if you download somebody's footage, then then that person stops getting views and st stops getting potential likes and stops getting potential, um, potential subscribers, which in this crazy game of being a small time YouTube content creator, you need as many subscribers as possible as fast as possible. You need as many views as possible, as fast as possible. And even losing a single subscriber or a single, uh, single view is frankly devastating to a small YouTube content creator. It probably means very little to somebody who has 10 million subscribers and is getting a million views on every video no matter what what is in the video PewDiePie for example like PewDiePie is in no way going to suffer so as much if somebody took his content and put it up as a small content creator would hmm. and Honestly, there, there, if you're going to be a YouTube content creator in general, you, you need to have a fairly prolific amount of time. If you don't have enough time to put put out footage and make the footage yourself, then you're, you're never going to succeed. Like, I have more time than most people would, but you, you're, you can't really part-time it as a as it is you have to you really have to be all in and still. hmm uh, there was something else I was gonna mention but I don't don't remember it now hmm Hmm. I could talk about Veterans Day, American Veterans Day, but but there's not really much I have as far as sentiment in this, to it. I I feel like most people who go into military service are either forced into it because of financial dire situations or because of some misguided patriotism or pride and then they almost always get completely abused and and used uh, and then they're mistreated by those those same governments and that that is not something i'm saying exclusive for the united states uh, i think that is almost certainly the case for every country with perhaps the no even countries that have like mandatory military services there's 
there's almost always rich people that get out of that or that everybody does them the year or two in military service that they have to do and only the extremely poor people with no other prospects end up staying and becoming career military uh, and particularly in the United States from what I've observed there's just a lot of for lack of a better term perverted mentality around the military and idolizing it and turning it into a worshipable worshipable god like uh complex uh, while not really admitting to anyone else or to themselves the the horrific nature of the work that is asked of people in the military and the violence that is inherently in any military organization and ideally it, it should be easy for anyone to agree to say that ideally the all military should be disbanded um, if even if that's not practical to do uh, or and it will never be practical to do but you can't even get people to agree on that point most of the time See, do we want to kill something else? But yeah, I think that's about as far as I need to go for Veterans Day. Uh, here we have a game on Steam called Typing Fingers, which... By that name, you would think was a typing game, and by the looks of it, it kind of looks like a cell phone kids game. Hmm. But it does look fairly visually polished, although maybe a little bit zoomed out. If these down here are words you're supposed to be typing, hmm. I'm not sure. Any typing game ever needs to exist. I'm not sure typing games need to to exist on Steam in particular. Uh, I don't know why a typing game would be early access. The 1049 is fairly expensive. English, full audio. Um, there is, I suppose, a decent argument to to say typing games might be well suited to have at least one other word, one other language involved. Um, like I could, I could definitely see the mentality that th there's really no reason to have a typing game where you aren't also typing in either a programming language to get more symbols or uh, Spanish or French. Um, Typing like Chinese and Asian characters would be a little bit difficult. So I'm just going to skip that. Mostly because I just accidentally closed the tab. But um, yeah, I, I don't think I can do a spotlight on a typing game. Unless it just happens to be like this is the best typing game anyone's seen in over the course of probably four or five decades now. Because... Frankly, I think if kids did need to learn typing at all, which is questionable um, in most cases, like that there's less and less in the next generation of people that are going to have to write projects and type them and not have just audio dictation or um, or can just handwrite it. Um, but I imagine there's just going to be a lot more, a lot less paperwork and BS projects in general. Um, but, yep. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if parents just brought their kids back to playing something like Mavis, Beach, Mavis Beacon's Teacher's Typing. 
which was good enough 40 years ago, probably. I'm exaggerating, it's not 40 years ago, it was probably 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, nothing's really changed in the world of typing. There's been no new ideas that anybody's embra embraced. It would be fairly crazy, for instance, for somebody to suggest getting rid of QWERTY keyboards in schools and putting either Dvorak keyboards or just full alphabetical keyboards where A is just at the top left and B is right next to it. Like any of those potentially could be implemented. Dvorak, from what I hear from Dvorak fans, is is the best for actual speed typing, but at a certain point you might just be breaking your fingers as it were, causing arthritis and joint pain if you could type as fast as you might be humanly possible because you in the same way that sprinters and and uh, athletes get physical injuries all the time because they're just pushing the human body that far. Uh, QWERTY was never designed to actually be uh, the fastest way to type. It was designed to, the exact opposite of that, to be something to slow down typists because the old typewriters, the mechanical typewriters, would jam if you accidentally hit two buttons at the same time, um, which has long stopped being a problem. Moving on, here we have a game called Sudoku Starry Night, which looks like a Sudoku game, but not one of the Sudoku games made by that YouTuber that I found. So, I don't know if I would want to play a separate Sudoku game, particularly one that looks like it's being made by a Chinese company. Although, in all fairness, you probably should consider playing a Sudoku game by an Asian company, since Sudoku came from Asia. <laughs> Uh, but nope, I don't, I don't think that's the move. And here you have more like this and not a single Sudoku game listed, Worthy which that is really ridiculous. Rush this. Hmm. Go ahead and evolve. I got what I did to to get the search bar, and yeah, you have to. You have to zoom in more to, to bring the search bar up. That's oddly how I got it to work. So if we just look on Steam, for instance, here we have, let's go ahead and zoom out again. Here we have Classic Sudoku, Miracle Sudoku, Sandwich Sudoku, Sudoku Thermo Sudoku, um, and just Sudoku. Here we have Sudoku Killer. Some of these do have Asian characters, but I believe all of these are from the exact same developer, Studio Goya. Yeah. Or at least a lot of them are. The These are, at least, Classic Sudoku, Sandwich Sudoku, Chess Sudoku, Thermal Thermo, Sudoku, and Miracle Sudoku. All of, all of these slightly different variants on Sudoku too, so not real ones. So actually, the, the one I should play more than anything that should be on my wish list should be Classic. Um, and we did see that there was a little bit of competition there uh, between Studio Goya hmm, and come over here and play because this guy's being a pain 
in all fairness, I'm not playing well either. So yeah, the, the other competition here would be Sudoku Universe and Sudoku Ki Killer, um, which at a certain point, I don't know if I really need like Sudoku Killer and Sudoku U uh, Jigsaw and all those other Sudokus. Honestly, I probably should just get Classic Sudoku if I'm going to get anything when it's on sale and show it off and probably get bored and not really finish it at all and that's with a lot of the puzzle games i play and then you have like an ultimate sudoku collection here that doesn't seem to be either one and one called sudoku zinkai and then you start getting sin of sudoku and hentai sudoku and sudoku quest games that try to maybe change it learn japanese kanji sudoku um, an endless mode in hentai sudoku for another four dollars bunny sudoku uh, so not even really a lot of competition and by by the time you are down to hentai sudoku you you have uh very mixed reviews i could probably sort by user reviews and logic puzzles to relax your brain or cracking the cryptid or paint it back some other games that aren't just having sudoku in the name potentially better offerings hmm. let's see this and then this hmm Hit that, I'm probably gonna lose because I'm not paying attention. Hmm. Moving on, we have a Gamatsu article here Tetris Effect Connected launch trailer. It's due out November 10th. I suppose Tetris Effect didn't have online multiplayer before. So Tetris. Tetris Effect Connected is going to be available for the PS4, PC, via Epic Store and Oculus Quest in the summer of 2021. Uh, well, it's going to be a free update to people who to already have Tetris Effect. Uh, it's going to come out for the first time on Xbox Series and Xbox One and PC via the Microsoft Store as well as on xbox game pass for console and pc so interesting seemingly like they are going to bypass steam for a multiplayer game which that could be weird although at a certain level i don't know if i really want to play tetris more than five minutes so like getting tetris effect for me would be one of those games where i would spotlight for five minutes and be like all right this exists i will never play this any more than I just did. One damage to all enemies. And then that. Then go ahead and evolve that. This is the end. see uh Komatsu has an article here sega wants to release more atlas ports remasters and remakes persona 4 golden was success was far beyond expectations which really goes to show how sega and just in general i would accuse all japanese companies of not understanding 
the state of the gaming industry around the world or even in their own country. Um, there's a recent article that came out and this is kind of a shocking way of of putting it, but there's definitely now direct accusations that that Sony has completely sidelined the Japanese studios and the European studios uh, putting everything in charge of the California um, the California Sony Inter Interactive Entertainment Office and we, we knew that we've seen that it's been fairly obvious but um, it being said directly and publicly is a different kettle of fish um, apparently a lot of that decision seems to have been cr made based on a high perceived lack of sales I'm going to keep talking as my internet's having trouble, apparently. Um, it's been having some trouble, certainly, for the past uh, past few days. I don't know if that's me, because I wasn't even messing with my network or router. Oh. But I have just been using, using the internet a lot. Um... That, yeah, there, there is this perception, and I, I kind of want to look at lifetime hardware sales from uh, Gamatsu, which they, they'll have that information, but the, there's clearly a heavy perception that the PlayStation 4 was a huge failure in Japan and did not sell anywhere as many units as Sony wanted. Um, and... I don't know how much of that is because of a just unfair comparison to the Nintendo Switch, which the Switch has completely dominated Japan and the world and is just sold like gangbusters. Or if it is a actual really fair comparison to say, no, the Switch sold really, really well and between mobile gameplay and people potentially just not playing buying new game consoles at all um, that there has not been enough room for sales in for the ps4 in japan to the point where there is also talk of I'm going to play Dragoncraft in the hopes that that's one of the challenges. Um, there's a lot of talk of Microsoft thinking about buying a Japanese company and potentially trying to buy their way into getting some kind of Xbox sales to happen. At the current moment, though, uh, I would have a hard time imagining that Japanese people are interested at all of buying a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series S or X. Um, if anything, the bigger thing that would help Japanese society would be to um, for, for them to be less shopaholics as they tend to be. Uh, there was an interesting Reddit uh, post I saw that talking about how people idolize the Japanese work culture when, when really it's just a toxic, uh, terrible uh, work culture of overworking yourself to death and, and never uh, being properly rewarded for it. And at certain points, I, I think I totally agree with that. But you definitely hear... Uninformed people often point to the Japanese as like the idealistic. These are the perfect capitalist people. They they work themselves to death forever. They they never complain. They're always working. They're always uh, they're always uh, giving a hundred and fifty percent while completely ignoring the fact that like yeah, and none of them are happy, and they have and they are constantly 
going out to drink their sorrows away, and they have no money to to have to be able to afford a reasonable amount of lodging or to have children. Um, or and they they constantly have no time to actually live their lives. So the only time they even get a moments of rest is if if they're in a in a pachinko parlor gambling smoking cigarettes but yeah i wouldn't say the u.s is too far off from that either though the u.s definitely idolizes uh the the mentality of working yourself to death and and not doing much of anything else Hmm. Five damage to a random enemy. Hmm. Guess we'll do that one. Hmm. There's still some problems to get back to Sega, though, of them releasing games. Uh, they, they still need to, to potentially open up the door for, like, Persona 4 being streamed. Like, I never saw anybody successfully stream anything. In all fairness, like, the latest LEGO game I I played also. Con copyright claimed. But I, I think I can... I think all the footage will go out. I think it's just they, they're stealing the monetization that I wasn't going to get anyways. So... So I've I've stopped wasting any time even trying to dispute those, because it doesn't matter to me at the moment. But yeah, if you can't stream Persona 4, uh, that that limits the amount of people that would be interested in this. As we're seeing right now, Gamer Grumps is Game Grumps is playing Ding and Ropa and. That definitely caught my eye as kind of this like murder mystery visual novel game uh, with some twists to it visually so it doesn't completely feel like a visual novel. Uh, but even in that case, it, it does run into the problem of there being a, um, a lot of story that you just probably don't want to spoil for yourself uh, Persona 4 has a little bit more going for it than just a visual novel it is a JRPG but it still is heavily uh, visual novelish and it's kind of an old game even though this is a remaster of it so you have some weirdness on that and of course it has the Japanese weirdness to it uh, I suppose the real question to, to search would be what is Sega made and published lately? Because certainly I could just click on Sega's um, uh, I could click on Sega's name And see what what has been what has been made uh, and put on Steam. Just come over here. So here we have like Sega's listings and you have Yakuza Like a Dragon, Fantasy Star Online 2, Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz, which is mixed reviewed. And then as you go further and further behind, you, you run into older games that were either mixed reviewed or things that were decent enough that they did make it to the wish list. 
uh, Catherine Classic, but not Catherine Remastered on PC. So that would be an ideal um, refix is to bring that to it, to the PC. Play Sonic games, mixed ones like Sonic Forces. And at this point, I think there's really no reason why I should play every single Sonic game. Uh, at a certain point, I'm just getting, like, ridiculous. Okay. Ready to witness my true strength? Okay. What do we want to do? Do that. And do that. That. Let's see what else do they have. Rock of Ages 2. I didn't like Rock of Ages 1. Um, Bayonetta. A lot of these are also published by Sega and not, not inherently first party titles of Sega. Rise is a platformer. Here we have one, Emily Displaced, choice-based uh, displacement, uh, visual novel. I think I probably skipped, didn't put that on the fall list because it didn't get enough reviews. Also, it's a little weird to have a white child, for lack of a better term, displaced by a war when I mean, you could say maybe she's Ukrainian or something like that, but like, it feels like it's disingenuous to not have a person of either Asian or Middle Eastern or African descent in that role, since they almost certainly are more affected by being displaced by by the effects of war. My blood is spilled. Hmm. We have Valkyrie Chronicles, which I think... Yeah, I guess that isn't a spin-off of the Tales series. Or maybe it is, but I guess it doesn't matter. We have Abyss Odyssey. A lot of mixed company of heroes. Typing of the Dead is a kind of unique spin. Castle of Illusion... Didn't realize I had that. Uh, Nights into Dreams is like one of the only remaining old Sega games I don't have. Condemned 1, but not Condemned 2. Uh, Jet Set Radio. Then you start getting into some really, really old uh, Sega Genesis games. Uh, and old Sonic games. When they, at that point when they were starting to re-release thing. Here you have two crazy taxis. Interesting that there's two copies of the same thing. Space Channel 5 Part 5. Don't have that. But then I, these all I got probably cheaper than 99 cents. I wouldn't be surprised if I got most of these for free. And not... I recently spotlighted all of them. They're all part of the Sega Mega Driving genesis and classics so they sell they give you this free software and then they 99 cents it sends you to death with microtransactions or they tried to and they i don't think they really succeeded with many people on that point no can take my hmm. A lot of Total War, a lot of Warhammer things that I probably don't want to really play. Um, Company of Heroes 2006 is like the oldest game on Steam that Sega has to offer. But if you come over this way, and I haven't actually tweaked Wikipedia, here we can have a full list of games. And let's see, is... If we click here and sort by latest release, 
we can just go through these franchises in chronological order from 79. Alex Kidd is probably relevant. Afterburner. A lot of these games have maybe some nostalgia around it, like Altered Beast and Golden Axe, but they don't have modern games. So unless Sega was actually going to try and make modern versions of a lot of these games, they don't work. Echo the Dolphin in the same place. Virtua Fighter. Certainly you can make a new game around that. Uh, but this is all early first generation stuff up to even 1996. Sakura Wars 1996 might be a um, bit of an exception there. If I win here, I'll be very surprised. Then you start getting into like Dreamcast games like Seaman and Crazy Taxi in 1999. Rez is somewhat rel relevant. Um, but again, I think that's something more they just published and they may not own any of it. Condemned, not relevant, but I would like to see more of that. Uh, Bayonetta, definitely more of that's in the works. The Conduit didn't succeed, so that's not going anywhere. And then you have here a massive list of things they acquired. So the Megumi uh, and Shin Megumi Tyson series is the Persona series, I believe. And that was acquired. And then you have license projects, which would be hard for them to bring to PC, like the Hatsumi, Hatsune Miku Project Diva series. Although I think there are probably are some Project Diva games on Steam, just not with Sega involved. Mario and Sonic at the Olympic. Um, hmm. And see, that was franchises. So... If you're going to go down, if you were going to build it more, you best you've got here are uh, Dreamcast games on Wikipedia. There's not even a list of PC games because Sega's just been really out of the game, as it were. They, they really don't have anything anything to offer so it's a fairly disingenuous statement um, unless they're gonna try and bring like arcade video games or mobile video games to Steam mobile video games are probably very uninteresting uh, arcade video games probably won't translate very well pinball games won't translate translate very well Let's see most recent game we have that they've officially made according to this list was 1976 so like I knew they had arcades I didn't think didn't know that they had that the, they hadn't made any official arcade games. Here's somebody missed a Prince of Seas. 2004 Virtua Tennis is the last, like, mobile game that was for cell phones in general. Then they started putting out Android and iOS specific games. Let's see. And I haven't heard of any of these. Alexandria Blood Show, Brick People, Crazy Taxi in 2012. Like, even this is eight years ago. 2015. And then it's just back to publishing things. But I don't see anything past, like, 2015 as far as publishing. So you're, you're talking Sega Sammy really just not being in the video game 
world at all, just having no involvement whatsoever. Um, let's try Havencraft. For a very long time, it, at a, a certain point, and I, I'm probably just rambling at this point, but uh, the idea of a publisher embracing the idea that we're going to publish on PC is not a bad thing. But the idea of Sega in particular bringing in a bunch of these magical, mythical old games that people would want and like in publishing them on PC is just not true. There, there, there aren't that many games out there that Sega has in their back catalog that people are interested in. And most of the ones that people are interested in have already been released in some way. So the best case scenario you're probably going to get from Sega is that they'll publish new games on PC closer to day one and then they will almost certainly try to double dip and resell you yet another copy of Crazy Taxi. Um, it would take a lot of hard work certainly to uh, It, it would take a ton of hard work to to remake something like Crazy Crazy Taxi or or Sonic or anything like that and make a good game. And we've seen them consistently try to make Sonic games and fail. So there's no faith you should put into Sega as, as a company being capable to remake any of their old products. Best case scenario again would be that they would license some third party developer to develop their products for them. Let's do this. To face judgment. Moving on, we have a game on Steam here called Shadow Play uh, Metropolis Foe, F O E, which looks like it is a card game that tries to also be kind of cyberpunkish. In the trailer, they show some a single character that caught my eye with like a tight-fitting silver Chinese dress but, but yeah you can see here they're showing off these like characters that don't seem to really matter yeah that, that's the one that caught my eye but everything else seems to be very cyberpunkish not very lewd and uh, it seems like there's just a whole bunch of different types of gameplay here. They're calling it an RPG. You can see it's already mixed. It's early access. English is not supported. Chinese only. Here you have another lewd image. Yep. There is definitely some danger around even Cyberpunk being what Cyberpunk is probably going to be. Um... I would not be surprised one bit if Cyberpunk, with its, you can customize your own genitals and, and this is going to be like a hard R adult game uh, uh, implications. I'm not sure if it actually directly said that was the way it was going to go down. Um, there, there's a danger that, that the game is, is fairly lacking and they try to sell on on sex more than they should. We certainly see that in Chinese games and low effort games in general. Okay. This. And then put this in the play. See, next we have a game on Steam here. There's some Asian characters called Zero Plan, which looks to me like it's probably one of these top-down RPG Maker type games. It does not look interesting. English is not supported. Three ninety-nine Chinese. Again, I I kind of thought I hadn't really run into 
that many Chinese games today since as I was opening the tabs, but I guess I ran into more. It's pretty easy to be tricked on that point. Okay. Banish an enemy follower. Don't need to do that. Hmm. You're mean. Interesting. If, if I keep my evolution points high and can evolve this, then might be in a good spot. Otherwise, I just destroy, banish it. Yeah, I have like no reason. That that shows I'm in a pretty good place. Uh, Tech Raptor has an article here. The Bloodless arrives in Bloodstained Ritual of the Night as a new character. Boss becomes a bonus playable character. Um, so, spoiler that that was a boss, I suppose. Um, I might very well benefit from the fact that I am not getting around to playing Bloodstained and purchasing Bloodstained. Uh, you just type in the word bloodless as the name. Interesting. Um, which does open up the possibility that there's several unlockable right now characters. Um, see. Go ahead and banish that. Do that, that, and that. <laughs> there is definitely some potential trouble, though, with the idea of playing Bloodstained at the very end of its content ad. Once it, there is just like an ultimate, we're not going to put any more work into this uh, announcement because there may just be dozens and dozens of characters to play as. Uh, that being said, because it's a Castlevania clone from a creator who worked on some of the Castlevanias, I believe, uh, it might very well be a game where I have to play it a little bit differently and just say, you know what, I'm going to play this as the main character in this playthrough, if I really enjoy this, we will come back in six months and do a second playthrough uh, later on. Probably was not as good of a reason to, to do that. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if that was the right move. I don't think it was. Uh, next, we have a game on Steam called Snow the Ultimate Edition, which is already mixed. I feel like Snow already existed and they've just changed the name. This is English only. They're saying it came out November 2020, but uh, I just don't believe that. Um, yeah. A snowboarding skiing game would be nice to find one if it was really good. That's not what we're seeing here, though. It's also single player, which for that type of game, it feels like there could be more. Um, I wonder if what happened here is you were given this founder's pack if you bought the game and now it is free to play hmm. because it it was i believe snow originally probably cost money so i would be surprised if people who paid at the beginning uh now are upset because they they've they've been kind of screwed
I think I can win. Yeah. Uh, Techcrafter has several articles here, and I don't think I've ever seen a outward obvious bias as far as Techcrafter against Xbox. I, I don't think they play that way. Uh, so I have to take them on their, their face that Xbox Live servers outage, outages were occurring enough to tarnish the Xbox Series X launch. I they also got some receipts here, um, but yeah, it, it does seem like Microsoft was definitely not in a position to let something like that happen. That. That is a bad move on Microsoft's part, particularly since they are constantly trying to get people to use their new Azure uh, web servers and um, their software if they can't maintain uptime. And, and they're buying companies left and right, so they could certainly have bought more capacity um, from even if they had to buy it from like Amazon or somebody. Um, See. Forbidden teachings deal three damage to enemy follower. It, well, no, Red Hot Boots does that. Hmm. Let's go ahead and kill that. I need to put this on the field if this is going to play. The real battle begins. That. And that. Hmm. This is like the worst way to do this, but I, I need another character. Uh, Major Nelson had some deals uh, because of Singles Day, apparently. Uh, so there are some things marked off on Xbox One, Game Pass, and such. I typically don't cover that, but I'll mention it. Deals with gold. Part of the problem, certainly with Xbox and deals with gold, is the... The fact that that is just something that is constantly happening and Steam sales potentially have are in danger of going that way. Epic Games Store sales go that way too. Um, once it loses that specialness, the, the deals start to get pretty bad and, and it, it's hard to justify it. Honestly, I really would only want two big Steam sales every year a summer sale and a black friday sale um and i would be fine with no other sales that happening at all where we know that valve and steam is constantly discounting a few things but those discounts tend to be minor discounts and and at a certain point that does just just become like the rollback prices that walmart claims they always have where where nothing is never not on sale. And in businesses around the US in particular, they they have figured out ways to to have things always say they're on sale when they when they really are never actually on sale uh being sold at the full price. Like half price shoes, I believe, pretty much just cycled half of their inventory to be on sale one week and then off sale another week it's pretty easy to to have like a rack of clothes or shoes and and have a sign on top of it that's 50 percent off on this rack and you just move that sign one week versus the next week um, and a lot of times in stores like that since the signs getting moved all over the place when you get to the cash register it's not programmed to actually give you the discount 
So lots of people just end up getting charged regardless because they don't want the embarrassment of fighting with a, a uh, checkout person who doesn't care. Uh, moving on, we have Plague Inc. The Cure is now out for iOS and Android. It might also be available for the PC game already. Uh, this is the special scenario of Plague Inc. where you are looking for a cure. Probably directly for COVID-19. Um, let's see. does not provide 100% real accurate or realistic scenarios to the steps needed to be taken to end the pandemic threat and the spread and scale at which they can be achieved in its game. It's not a scientific simulation. <laughs> Important to probably say that. Uh, Plague Inc. certainly was in a small danger of, of feeling like it was going to become the center of focus around the pandemic and video games when it came out well before COVID-19 or any other big pandemic had happened and it really has no connection although also they kind of added that to themselves when they added the fake news mo uh, option like they, they started to go a little political in that direction where it would have been fairly easy for the endemic creation to say we're just done with plague inc we're not going to put any more content in it or we're not going to put any content in it around these events because we don't want to be political um they, they certainly could have gone that way and they, they would have uh, potentially sidestepped criticism in a lot of ways it feels like a lot of what they're doing is an attempt successfully uh, one of the rare successful attempts to, to sidestep criticism because there hasn't been any major legitimate uh, articles that, that said yeah Plague Inc. is is designing is a game de designed to to gamify and make make pandemics and plagues um, fun instead of taking them seriously make fun of those um there we go On the other hand, I suppose it's worth mentioning that that the um, play game game is super popular, so it would make a decent amount of sense that that. Uh, Plague Inc. should just get more content in the same way that The Binding of Isaac is super popular and it's just constantly getting more co content. Right. Strike, if you have more evolution plants, induce damage just follow to zero until the end of the turn. Okay, well, I could do that. That doesn't do anything. Yeah. Well, TechRaptor's website webpage is broken on their listing here, so they had a video review here for Hello Puppets, but you can see that it's totally been mistyped in the HTML, which, in a weird way, I doubt too many of the cr content creators on TechRaptor are actually encoding anything in in HTML, um, at the the U block origin, I turned it completely off just to make sure it wasn't my software that was doing that, 
and privacy badger just, just blocking tons of ads yeah even if you weren't going to use privacy badger on anything just having it installed to see how many different third-party ads are just tracking you and uh and just wasting your bandwidth it's completely ridiculous hmm. Uh, as far as Hello Puppets as a game, I I think it's a fairly decent game. Let's see, and this is like one of the things you can get. But Shadowverse is kind of weird in that it doesn't really tell you. Let's just come over here and look. Like, doesn't really tell you what you need to do to to collect things. You see, you have Get Victory Rewards, and that would just open a web page, I suppose. And so you have to go to the web web page, and uh, then read the news, as it were, to to figure out what you can win. Champions Battle Leader Ticket, uh, Injus Dragon Emblem. In just dragon shield play for 10 days and if you play for 10 days you can get a seer's globe uh, so it kind of means you probably have to play 10 days straight uh, over the course of November 1st to uh, de December 27th which that's actually a decent amount of time. And then just a lot of stuff they want to sell you. A lot of stuff. I probably missed some of these daily quests too. Yeah. I, I think I may have November 12th. Nope. Actually, we're going to get more date special quests November 12th. All right, wow. That whole system is a bit of a mess. Let's get back over here and we're not making great progress at all. Some more animated cards. Win 200 ranked with forest craft. Hmm. Well, there are missions still. Get a third ranked victory. Get one with Shadow Craft or Portal Craft. Blood Craft or Haven Craft. And win a ton of games. Like, I think what this might indicate, I'm not sure, is that I have to win four more games or play four more games before it offers me another treasure chest. Or, maybe that means I only have to play one game or win one game before it offers me another treasure chest. <laughs> A lot of different possibilities there. Shadowcraft. Nah, let's just go with Bloodcraft. I don't want to play Shadowcraft today. Ubisoft is looking for a lead writer for the Avatar project. Um, I don't know if people really would want to work for Ubisoft. Uh, on the other hand, you might be just desperate and being a lead writer anywhere for a brief second might might improve your uh, resume somewhat. That That is part of the danger, certainly, of having so many, like, Me Too accusations around a company and just ab abuse worker abuse accusations around the company is that you, you you may need to take that in consideration people who worked in at ubisoft may have to take their their names off of um uh, take that job listing off their resume or at least obfuscate it in some way i wouldn't be surprised if you had been a lead writer 
and Ubisoft in the past, you might just say lead writer at a major AAA video game company um, yeah, and generalize it that way and not say which AAA company until they ask you uh, and get you into an interview. Uh, whereas generally in a resume, I imagine you would just put uh, if you were working at like Valve, you could say lead writer at Valve, and and that would be maybe maybe the, a damning with faint praise uh, job description too, because it's not like there was any games that had writing that were released by Valve in the past ten years. Um, yeah, at a certain point. I think Ubisoft is going to have to just completely change its name. I think that the, the, the stink is on Ubisoft and it, it's going to affect people's careers. And it probably is affecting their ability to hire people. And that's probably why this is the first time I've ever seen a job listing from Ubisoft. Moving on, we have a game on Steam here called Dogfight, which is a low polygonal uh, dogfighting simulator. It's very generic, just pure blue for the ocean or sky. Mixed reality, free, so I guess the price is right if you have a VR headset, which, so it's a free $600 game, basically. But it doesn't even look like it's worth your time if, uh, for free. Let's see, test of strength. We can do that. That's about all we can do. Next, we have a game on Steam called Space Soldier, and this looks like a very generic thumbnail. It looks like it's a fairly generic kind of cell phone top down hack and slash game. I don't... I'd like to say asset flippy, but I don't know if I've seen any of these assets before. But you can definitely see there's like a bunch of keys. It kind of feels like almost like a gauntlet game in a graveyard. But it does feel very cell phone-like. Six stars and 39 cents. English and Chinese. Yeah. Once again. Nothing interesting. One damage to an enemy. Play that for two, three. Play that. Right. If I put this on the field, and then evolve. And then play this. And then attack that. And then then turn. Here we have a game on Steam called Diary of Dawn, which clearly is a joke troll game with MS Paint level graphics. It's $1.99 English only. I thought I was kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel, but frankly, I've managed to, to just talk so much that there's not so much actual conversation I didn't I didn't need to have so many of these games after all Forge. there we go I could kill this but then he would almost certainly just summon a new one so I'm gonna wait <coughs> Next, we have a game on Steam called Flat Earth Simulator. Um, as far as I can tell, Flat Earth as a concept uh, was 99% brought back into general parlance, um, if it ever existed in the past at all, by 8chan memers. And it feels like probably, at least at the beginning, 90% of everybody who was printed 
proclaiming it was a troll, but I think there probably is at least 30% of people that really believe it. Uh, really uh, religious people, I imagine, that are trying to be literalist about the way the world was described in Genesis and coming up with the belief that the earth is flat. It is also one of the weirdest and most ridiculous conspiracy theories because you have to then attach some other conspiracy theory on top of it as to why there would be this like claim that the earth was round if it wasn't round um, and the people don't seem to be able to get that far before they just manage to prove themselves to be completely insane for lack of a better term at a certain point just denying a reality for for no good reasons is just just being like defiant for insane reasons um so as a video game getting away from that point is there a reason for something like this to exist or is this something that shouldn't be allowed to be on sale by Valve? Valve's libertarian mentality almost certainly would say no we should let this but by this existing you're going to allow a lot of really dumb people to be tricked a lot of it, uh, dishonest people to use this to to create quote-unquote evidence that that they are right um, uh, and meanwhile somebody here is making 4.99 around this uh, it's English only but I wouldn't be surprised if some other country somewhere is is profiting around this and propagating this and this is part of some bigger conspiracy uh, government actual government conspiracy to to just create uh, disenfranchisement and and distrust between the US government and there's plenty of legitimate reasons to distrust the US government so you really don't have to get to oh it's all just a flat the, the planets flat um, some have definitely made the argument that ideas like flat earth are good in the sense that it it just red flags everybody who you probably never want to deal with and never want to uh, as being crazy um there has been definitely a lot of crazy people who in the past who have been able to start their own little churches start their own little cults uh, hide out in the in in the forest um have their quiverful families in which they have 15 kids uh, who then they teach eh, what they believe to every single kid and demand that they believe it. Um, usually uh, through some form of abuse. Um, so th those things have existed in the past and, and now the, they are coming to light and maybe sunlight will eventually fix all of that um, but then flat earth in particular and, and I'm gonna move off of this topic in is one of those cases where it seems like if there was ever a pat point in the past 2,000 years where people believed the earth was flat um, that had been corrected that misbelief had been corrected a long time ago and for it to come back as a resurgence uh, might indicate that there is no level of sunlight and disinfectant to insane bad ideas there's no level of science uh, that can be taught to people that will 100% immunize a a community away from just I'm gonna deny the evidence right in front of me I'm gonna deny the science uh, I'm gonna deny it just because of it and there's probably a good argument to that there there 
probably is just a percentage of people who are oppositionally defiant at their core and they just don't want to agree with people or with reality. Delusional people will probably always exist and with anything short of having good health care, good mental health care around the world and identifying those people and uh, medicating or institutionalizing those people, that's probably the only way you fix this. Uh, but to get back to Valve's involvement, I, I don't think Valve should be taking money from these people because there's, like, this developer, the truth tellers, is what they're calling themselves, this publisher, they're, they're going to be nothing but trouble. Uh, should have never approved them, just said, no, we, we do not want to do business with you. Valve has done that with, um, with plenty of other people. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if their bank accounts stop working for one reason or another. Uh, I don't want to see a situation where it's like PayPal and PayPal just says you can't get money, but, but yeah, they, they, they very well could be the squeaky wheel. I guess we need another Havencraft. So we'll play again. Hmm. At a certain point, I am making an argument for Valve doing be what's best for them and deplatforming uh, games that promote this idea in such a low effort way. Uh, on the other hand, if there was a game, if you wanted to make a Discworld game, by all means, Discworld, Universe, all the planets are, are a disc. That it's in the title. It's a Discworld. It's a flat earth. Uh, so if you wanted to make a great video game around that, or if you wanted to make a different universe where the world is flat, that by all means, that's fine. But that's not really what this product is. Hmm. So yeah, I would, I would say Valve has to say no, no to this. And frankly, if I was a little bit more aggressive, which might be an understatement, a, a misstatement of the century. I would flag the game myself. But we've seen very few games, relatively speaking, get flagged off of Steam. And, and really, at the end of the day, it's Steam's sh job to make sure these games are not approved in the first place. Because um, this, this is just a total embarrassment to Steam. This is the exact kind of thing that Kotaku and Polygon will write articles about. It's the exact sort of thing that will get bad press to Valve and hurt Steam as a storefront for all game publishers. I would personally much prefer them let in shaky grounds, potentially illegal, lowly anime porn games on their storefront before they let even a single uh, a single uh, flat earth game like and I and I mean like really really shaky ground animated toddlers type stuff just uh, Of course, Valve would never do that. Uh, moving on, we have a game on Steam here called Ghost Stories 2, which looks like you run around as a ghost sometimes, and then the other players try to catch you. This seems like this really is just a clone of Phantasma, Phantasm or whatever that game is that people are really somewhat popular streamers are playing right now. Um... But yeah, it's English full audio. It's single player only, so that doesn't make any sense. How can it be single player, but then the ghost acts so wonky? Like, that that makes no sense. So they just animated a really wonky ghost in this case. Like, that 
It's no sense at all. Let's see if we can see that animation again. See this creepy doll. You turn around and he's chasing you. And yeah, it's just a wonky attack animation. Wow. Alright, well that looks like garbage. Moving on, TechRaptor has an article here, Proteus is a better Doom than Doom, which, Impressive. when I had seen it, I, that was kind of my thought. That's kind of my thought too, is that Proteus did look like it's a very good game. It's not out yet for them to review though. They don't have a review, they're just advertising it, frankly. Did we open a treasure chest in that case? I don't think we did. Okay, we need now either shadow craft or portal craft. So I guess we try shadow craft and then probably portal craft for the rest of the day. Let's see, uh, Gamatsu has an article here. Rune Factory 5 details romance options. Lucy and Cecile, townspeople, Simone, Terry, Hina, and Julian. So, little bits of images here uh, of different characters in Rune Factory 5, which you'd think Rune Factory was like a match 3 game, but it's actually an RPG game from Marvelous, from best I can tell. I can see the beginning of the end, so I'd like to ramp up. Here we have a game on Steam called Mini Farm 2020, putting your... A year in a game is never a good idea on Steam. And this definitely looks like a cell phone uh, waiting simulator, farming simulator. For $1.59, English only. Um, in a weird way, if you really, really wanted to play these games and yet didn't have the ability to play them for free on a cell phone, the, this doesn't look so bad that I would just immediately dismiss it. But when you take a step back and realize there's really no reason why on a PC you would want to play these games. And there's no good reason. If if you have some weird urge to play these games, uh, by all means, play them on a cell phone when, when you're waiting on a train or sitting on a toilet. But don't, don't have your potential $1,000 computer playing a game that... that runs on uh, potentially a $20 cell phone. $20 is an exaggeration. Uh, I suppose it is also worth mentioning that uh, Apple has m announced their M1 chips, system on the chip, uh, completely getting away from Intel and pretty much any other third-party chip developer, I imagine. It has, from what I had briefly ascertained, an incredibly small amount of RAM um, that is shared between all the parts of the system. So there is no faster video RAM. It's just all system RAM is video RAM is both. Um, and they are going to be selling these in highly overpriced devices that are going to... Um, require every bit of software to be recompiled once again and and it's it's just probably not a smart move um but what can you say at a certain point it's almost always been the case that if you were an apple fanboy you were a sucker i i would argue if you were an Apple fanboy back when the Apple II computer or the Apple I came out, that was reasonable. It is very possible that Apple computers would have been the default and uh, PC computers, x86 computers, would have been 
uh, abandoned. There is a potential alternate reality where that happened. But anything after that, you will have just always been kind of either lazy or stupid as the your default reason to have an Apple product. You're, you're lazy in that you don't want to deal with all the BS around my Windows, which in all fairness, there has been tons of BS around Windows. Or you were just stupid and you wanted everything uh, babied for you and you didn't want to deal with computers in general. At a certain level, there is also a lot of people who just would have never bothered to touch a computer if it weren't for Apple. So they brought in the less computer intelligent and I'll, we'll we'll say computer intelligent specifically when I'm saying it's stupid that's what I mean the, these people could have been very smart in other ways uh, and probably were uh, but because Apple brought in the less computer intelligence they brought it to the masses that started to dumb down general computer users somewhat and bring down the average bring down the mean um, and maybe that made some software in the long run a little bit more user-friendly, but in a lot of ways it just brought a lot of really dumb people to, to computing. And you definitely saw that happen with things like, uh, like the iPhone. Like, there, there would be considerably fewer people that had a cell phone at all uh, for many, many years um, until it just became so ubiquitous that it, it, everybody basically needs a cell phone. Uh, and there still is a small percentage of people that just refuse to get a cell phone and learn their cell phone, whether it's an Android or an iPhone. And there's still plenty of older, less computer literate people I'd say, yeah, if all your friends have an iPhone, get an iPhone. Then your friends can help teach each other how to use the limited number of features there. Um, and I don't mind putting training wheels on people that probably barely use a phone at all. Uh, but in the computing realm, that's never been the case. You can very easily live your life without... Uh, without a PC nowadays at all. Hmm. I think I'm going to lose. We may need to wrap up fairly quickly here. Moving on, we also have Farm Day 2021, which we just saw 2020. Exact same game, released at the exact same time for $1.59. Uh, which, that's... Ridiculous. And to add insult to injury, I suppose they also have Fast Food Simulator, which at least in this game case is a different cell phone game. All from, I believe, the same developer. This is $1.59 also. English only. Here, if we look at this publisher... Mini Farm 2020, Farm Day 2021, Cake Shop Simulator, Fast Food Simulator. Just a lot of things flooding the market since October 28th. And none of them really getting any reviews. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to go to the bathroom. So I think we should just probably wrap up here and call it a stream. I'm going to lose here. So here we have some news real quick. Konami releases a Solid Snake Bionic Arm. This is incredibly stupid. And it definitely goes to show the ideas that Konami has. As far as what they care about. As far as Solid Snake. And... Um, and the... the their license... Is. Uh, Tech Raptor has an article here. Final Fantasy XIV will resume house stimulation in December. 
Okay. They will inform you if your house is due for demolition. Apparently this is for people who haven't played the game in a while. Would be my guess for the online things. Uh, online Final Fantasy XIV. Probably won't get back to playing anymore today. So I'll probably just leave this daily quest. Uh, we have Xbox Series X orders being delayed worldwide by re retailers. So that being an issue certainly too. Um, Deathloop launches May 21st, 2021, according to Gamatsu, according to a, a listing, I believe on an Australian site. Let's see. Capcom updates its sales. Monster Hunter World Iceborne, 6.6 .6 million. Resident Evil Biohazard, 8.3 million. Uh, um, let's see. Monster Hunter World, 16.4 million. So um, they lost about 10 million people for that DLC. RE2, 7.5 million. RE3, 3 million. So you can see they lost about half their audience for Resident Evil 3 versus Resident Evil 2. They rushed that. That that was a huge mistake, frankly. Um, they should have given it a whole year separating it. Street Fighter 5, 5 million. Devil May Cry 5, 3.9 million. Devil May Cry fairly low on that level. Capcom potentially could be bought out by Microsoft. Um, but I, it would be questionable with Capcom's... Uh, L relative success lately uh, that they wouldn't I just don't think that they would want to to probably sell to a uh, western company and that that's true for I think most Japanese companies really is that if they're successful enough to not be bought out they don't want to be bought out if they're a failure enough to be bought out then there's probably not much you can do uh, Microsoft can do to improve it. And I think particularly in Japan, throwing more money at the issue doesn't solve problems as much as it does in America. Uh, Gamatsu has the Famitsu re review scores for issue 1667. Uh, Cross Crush, 29 out of 40. Crystal Ortha, 28 out of 40. Haven't heard of either one of those. Disc Room, 30 out of 40. Freak Out Calamity TV Show, 27 out of 40. Haven't heard of that. Greedfall, 29 out of 40. Hyrule Warriors, on the other hand, Age of Calamity, 36 out of 40. For a Warriors game, that is a particularly high rating, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they are kind of grading on a scale compared to other Warriors games. And so uh, that might be a higher score than it probably deserves. Although I've never really found Famitsu to be inconsistent in its reviews. It seems to be very, very consistent on on its four reviewers giving a 1 out of 10 uh, review. I assume it's 1 out of 10. I don't think you can give a 0. Replica, another game I haven't heard of, is 29 out of 40. Motoru Dentetsu Shawa Heisei Rawa Mitaiben is probably a... Um, probably either a train game or a um, mahjong game there that's 34 out of 40 whatever it is it's fairly good soldier x sold x to final prototype 29 out of 40 decent number of unrecognizable japanese listings there all right well i guess hyrule warriors is an interesting twist. I, I was thinking it would be almost certainly just immediately dismissed as yet yeah, another Warriors game with with Nintendo cover um, skins. Gamatsu has an article here. Genshin Impact version 1.1 update is now available. New characters, weapons, quests, systems, and more. Um, at a certain point, I probably should just stop talking about Genshin updates because they're just going to happen very consistently. And unless I see some major renewed interest 
or somebody covering it, I, I think that wave of interest probably has come and gone. It probably caught a few people, um, and there probably are a decent percentage of people still playing it, but uh, I don't think there's going to be any new growing audience, potentially. Uh, TechRaptor has an article here that Nintendo Switch Asia sales is 6.7 times higher than launch, which older games are getting a new lease on life, apparently. Yeah. Why Asia sales are higher? Possibly because more Chinese people are buying it, possibly because of the pandemic, possibly because uh, more people in Japan are buying it because of the pandemic. I suppose it's worth mentioning here that this was tweeted out. Borderlands Players 3 upgrading to PS4 and PS5. Be sure to use all your golden keys before upgrading as they will not transfer with you. Uh, check out our frequently asked questions. That seems like that is just pure laziness because the, the whole shift system fairly seemed like they they had figured that out and gotten that to work very well but i imagine that in part is the fault of the way things are done in the back end of the sony system and for as much as i might complain about the california office taking control of sony interactive entertainment they very well might fix the back end networking and uh, and just back-end features in general that have never been well designed or programmed for the sony playstation store um, there might be a, a good argument for them to adopt a kind of TikTok policy where they let the japanese office run the show for a while and then they let the the, the American office run the show, and maybe they even let the European office run the show for a while. Although it would be better if just all the offices communicated and worked together, but sometimes that works and sometimes that doesn't. Here we have a Tech Raptor, no, Humble Bundle, uh, listing for VR games, and that seems to be the only game bundle. It's very, very easy to dismiss VR games if you don't have a VR headset. Uh, but otherwise, if you were gonna, if you did have a VR headset, seventeen dollars to get the Walking Dead Saints and Zero, uh, Saints and Sinners, and these other games where, where you just need a dearth of games, whether they're particularly good or not, would be a decent offering. All right. And so I'm gonna leave a lot of games for Friday, and then I'm going to go down my Twitter feed. And we'll see if we want to announce anything uh, as far as new news. Actually, we might go back and cover some more of the, um, the games, but, but I won't play anymore. That may have been a bit of a false alarm. Hmm. I kind of feel like I'm getting to the point where I'm I'm gonna actually have to claim I have something like Crohn's or something as far as urges to go to the bathroom that that is gross certainly to talk about but it has become a major problem with me where there are times where I just feel like oh no I'm I, I need to go but not quite yet and and that lasts for like hours and hours and hours and thus I'm not recording footage because I don't want to be in the middle of a pre-recorded footage uh, video and have to pause it. Although I can do that and have f kind of started doing that more often. Hmm. Alright, so let's cover some of these games. Here we have a game called Agent Klutz, which says it's an experimental shooter rhythm game with pixel graphics. Hmm. 
be the worst secret agent in history. As this genre bending mini rhythm based spy thriller. Hmm. hmm. See, I don't, I don't think there's enough polish here visually. English only. Yeah, I think you have to say no to this. It, this is like the attempt at somebody making a game, but then choosing the absolute wrong graphics. And I just played Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, and the graphics looked way better in that game from decades ago than this. And so we there are definitely games out there that are worse looking than even the worst games of of the past um and the dumbing down of visual aesthetics is not acceptable like we don't want games to get worse looking or worse sounding or worse playing we want them to get better in all those aspects here we have a game on Steam called X Life, which kind of looks like X Wife. Um, but to me, it looks like it's probably just an asset flip um, game. Maybe kind of like an escape, escape the room type game. Four dollars and ninety nine cents English and um, Portuguese Brazil. The game universe is much bigger than its concept, which takes place inside a house uh, with a superb advanced artificial intelligence. However, the whole game can explain why things happen and how they happen. Yeah, this like in all fairness, this might be a case where game developers from like who are speaking Portuguese just cannot translate things to English to explain them well. But honestly, I think a lot of these Portuguese games and Brazilian games are just desperate people trying to scam money out of people. Um, and, I, and I know Brazilians tend to be completely broken and that has created a culture of scamming, uh, running scams, but uh, that's once again a thing where Valve probably needs to step in and protect its consumers better. They they do have a duty, in my opinion, to protect consumers from buying what are obvious scam, low-effort games. Uh, TechRaptor has an article about this called the Feldher S FSLB150 Ship Storage Solution. This is for people who play tabletop games, by the looks of it. It seems to be several padded, like, pre-cut foam things. You could do this yourself with pick-and-pluck foam, sure. But, yeah, it, it looks like an interesting idea. The box opens in a fairly unique way, so it stays flat and the pieces don't go everywhere. There's a couple different layers. Um... At a certain point, you might make the argument that these types of games are have just so incredibly brittle, cheap pieces that they're going to fall apart anyways. And you shouldn't play these types of games, but I, that's kind of not the argument I think most people want to hear. Yep. It seems like it has two different versions. And I could definitely see a lot of different uses if you were playing a collectible card game this would probably be a decent way to hold decks although there's probably better uh sturdier ways and take note that there is foam here so any impact on the side of the box or just internally is only going to cushion so much uh where a rigid outer piece besides just this this relatively flimsy cardboard might be more protective. A hard outer shell with foam on the inside is generally how you'd want things. I could see holding electronic parts in this, but this is not anti-static foam, so you have to be fairly, somewhat careful around that. Um, generally, you could put most electronic components in 
places in foam that isn't isn't anti-static but uh, if you want to be really careful if you have very very delicate things you would want it in an anti-static bag first or you'd want anti-static foam that which tends to be pink um, this might be anti-static foam but I doubt it you could put all kinds of collectibles and something like that so yeah that looks interesting I don't know if I have that many collectibles anymore I've more and more just tried to clean up and get rid of cont uh, stuff like I have tons of Legos but frankly holding Legos in something like that would be way too expensive and and unnecessary and you'd still lose little Lego one by one studs in the cracks and crevices of foam like that um, moving on tech raptor has an article no more heroes in nord cult uh nord culture's growth which this is more of just an editorial piece which we don't see too many of those from tech raptor no more heroes is kind of a shame in the fact that no more heroes 2 and i'm not even sure no more heroes 1 is not available on pc so like there's no real way for me to cover it I could get a Switch, I could get the re-releases of No More Heroes 1 and 2 and play them and then comment later, but it's not really worth it to, to try and develop some kind of capture system from a, from a Switch. Uh, yeah, that's the one thing Nintendo Switch has really failed is to get coverage from people. They don't seem to really want it but they're definitely not getting it either even from big video game critics next we have a game on steam here called divinest light which looks like you are in a puzzle platformer um with a black and white aesthetic we've seen this done before it's five dollars and 99 cents a bunch of languages all I can really do for a game like this is put it on the following list and see if people review it. Next, we have a game called Krakatoa, which I'm not sure I know what Krakatoa is. Isn't Krakatoa the thing somebody saw carved into the wall, uh, into a tree, and then the entire like village disappeared uh, in the U.S.? I don't know. Single player action adventure survival horror game. That's a lot of tags. 3D audio. You need to listen closely. And be aware of your surroundings to stay alive. Which probably means you just die no matter what. $4.99 English full audio. Put this on the fall list. But I wouldn't be surprised if this is nowhere as good as this cutscene seems to imply it might be. There, there's a, actually a decent amount of polish being shown out there. Next we have the last elements looking for tomorrow, which just looks a lot like that other cyberpunk uh, game. It looks very, very similar. I imagine what we're going to start seeing is more and more cyberpunk clones that were scheduled to be released when the original cyberpunk release date was supposed to happen which i believe was november 11th and now these games are just going to stand out as weird um this is four dollars and 24 cents bunch of languages it looks like you might be flying around in a space taxi for a lot of it and it might be kind of a um Adventure game, but they're saying it's a racing game. I'm gonna put this on the fall list though. It's polished enough that there might actually be something here. This definitely goes to show the problem with trying to make anything cyberpunk is that there's just that aesthetic of there being everything overgrown, way more signs, way more 3D models. Where you, if you were to make a game in a forest, and that's way easier. You can just use Speed Tree to do that, and um, and that's 
that's way cheaper. So, it shows a level of ambition, at least, to set yourself in an, in a heavily uh, suburban, uh, overgrown cyberpunk world. Next, we have a game on Steam here called Rags to Dishes, which seems like it's a VR version in which you're supposed to cook and serve food. We've seen this before, although I will say this visual aesthetic does look better than most of the times. Not $24.99 better, plus having to be played on VR. It says it maybe has six hours of, uh, six plus hours of content. That's what it claims. I don't, I don't know if I believe that. I like the visual aesthetic. I hate that it's VR. I, I hate that it's a cooking, uh, cooking game, so I'm not going to put it on the fall list. Next, we have a game called Hit Zero Chronos, which looks like this is one of those games where time slows down and you do John Woo bullet shooting. Uh, we've seen games like this, and this is probably a low-effort clone of those games. It does seem to have some giant monsters, but I don't know how you do a giant boss battle for a game like that when... You have a limited number of bullets. I guess maybe you have a limited number of bullets in your your gun, and then you have to uh, reload. This is ninety nine cents. Bunch of languages. I can put it on the fall list. Almost certainly, it will fall right back off the fall list. Let's see. Next, we have. Just one, seemingly, today. RPG Maker-style game. And like most RPG Maker games, it looks completely uninteresting. With the exception of a big busted girl. English not supported. $7.19 Chinese only. Um, yeah, if we, if we got down to only seeing like one RPG Maker game... A week. That, that would be fairly nice. Next to we got a game called Pleiades. I guess that's how you'd pronounce it. Pleiades? Sounds like a word. Looks like it might be a walking simulator adventure. Again. In all fairness, like, Portal Stories Mel is a walking simulator in every point in which it isn't a puzzle game. So, had Portal or Portal Stories Mail only shown screenshots of and footage of people walking around, it, you would really misunderstand the level of actual interactivity that is in the Portal games. Same is true here. Watching this video, it does kind of feel like there's potentially more gameplay here. It seems... Maybe weirdly skinned gameplay and maybe weird in general gameplay. But enough to make me think it should be on the fall list. $10.13 is kind of a perfect price for a game like this. English full audio. It's also got some awards it claims to have. Um, or some logos of some sort. That it's... Putting, I think those are actually just logos and not awards. Um, a subversion saga game. Are there multiple subversion saga games? Not, not apparently. Hmm. They called themselves 1122 Industries, and then they released the game on 1122. Hmm. It's not a terrible name if you. If you don't want to spend a lot of time and effort figuring out a name for your company, just giving yourself a number based on a launch date and then making that launch date. That's the big part is you can't delay your first game at that point. Or if you do, you have to delay it a whole year. Let's see, next we have a game on Steam called Number One Rich, which sounds like it's a probably a Chinese game. Looks a lot like Mario Party. Seems to be even drawing a character that looks a lot like Luigi. 
$3.19 online PvP English in the interface, but full audio Chinese simplified and traditional otherwise. So, yeah, by the looks of this, this looks like a Chinese clone game. I, I won't even bother to say low effort on that case. Here we have a game called Bring It to Mom, which looks like it is a bouncing physics game that immediately I'm uninterested in. And then zooming in on an eye. See, I might be interested in something like this if this was just like a weird pachinko style game and you were flinging balls all over the place and it was just all about getting score and you couldn't die. That There might be an idea there. That's $4.49. Uh, but as I see it, I don't think I want to put that on the fall list. Next, we have a game on Steam here called Behind the Horizon, which looks kind of like an RPG Maker game, but probably wasn't used, made with RPG Maker. But in the end, it's still an RPG game, if the images want to load. fourteen ninety nine English and German. I haven't seen any German English games very often these days. A lot of videos I want to play, but the screenshots don't want to load. Well, I've seen enough already, so I, I couldn't show more. Next, we have Cannabis Farmer Strain Master, which do you really need a 3D? cannabis farming simulator game do you want one where you are using a samurai sword is this an asset flip game probably is this a game that really would keep your attention probably not this is really just an example of had you made a flat 2d graphic game of this and sold it on cell phones you probably would catch a lot more people's attention Instead of asking for $17.99, which is too expensive, and agreeing to a third-party user license agreement. Um, so that is definitely a no. Next, we have a game on Steam here called Endorium, which looks like it's a Beat Saber game. And it doesn't look very visually polished. Maybe there's actually no music to it in, in this case, and you are just beat sabering. Seems like there's also a laser whip that you might be able to use, and some variations to make your own lightsaber. Yeah, an official Star Wars game where you customize your own lightsaber, and then you're just swinging it around probably already exists for, like, the Kinect, uh, but bringing that to... PC might get you some sales. It might not really be worth it. At the end of the day, it depends on if you already have all of those art assets and everything done for some other game and you can just make a cheap buck that way. Um, at the end of the day, you also run into the problem of there being... Um, you're swinging your arms around, potentially hitting people or breaking your, your VR headsets or controllers when when playing a game like that. Of course, that's inherently a danger of any VR game, almost. Hmm. This is 1699 English full audio. I think he even cut into the floor to drop down to a new level. Which, that's... I mean, they really are hitting all the beats of what you'd want to see in a VR game. Where you had a lightsaber. With the exception of not really having enough enemies. Next, we have a game on Steam here called Euro's Fantasy Adventure. Which, this definitely looks like it is just a low-effort Chinese game with 3D models. So, there's a little bit of effort there. But yeah, you have like a bunny that's awkwardly spread eagle in the front. 
and then just a lot of asset flip things. I, w I wouldn't be surprised if this was supposed to be an Alice in Wonderland. Here you have some really ugly looking walking green cactus like people. A lot of this feels like it might be inspired by Spirited Away. Which in all fairness I guess Spirited Away might be inspired by Alice in Wonderland a little bit too. Made in Unity with a V-Roid. So I don't know what V-Roid is. $2.69. Way too cheap. English and Chinese. Um, that's one of those games in particular where there could be an 18 plus patch and you just you, you may not even know what you're really buying. Uh, here we have a game on Steam. ASMR Journey Animated Jigsaw Puzzles. That seems like probably inaccurate description i don't know how you get asmr audio to synchronize and make sense around doing a jigsaw puzzle and frankly i don't personally think you would want to listen to asmr while doing a jigsaw puzzle um, but i don't listen to J asmr anyways but i, I think you'd kind of want to focus on the asmr more and when doing a puzzle you probably would want Either background noise or complete silence. This is a dollar seventy nine English and Portuguese Brazil. Again, yeah, combining something that was fairly popular on YouTube for a long time and a low effort game seems very scammy. Here we have a game called Yuktina, which is seemingly has no textures at all for all this blackness seems like it's just black on black on black the the actual game feels a lot like um shadow of the colossus but i bet it doesn't play anywhere like that at a certain point you could be playing monster hunter and there, there's probably a good contrast that needs to be made compared to like the most recent Monster Hunter and the most recent Shadow of the Colossus style game uh, because Monster Hunter might really beat them out of the water. This visually just looks bad. $7.99 English only. So I'm going to say no to that. And then finally we have Buddy's Quest Creative Quest which is some kind of pixel art 3d platforming game of which i have no interest four dollars and 24 cents english french german and spain spanish so we'll close that tab we i've i've been once again very bad about um about dealing with any of the tabs and new announcements so we didn't have a lot but even at that it's still been 2 hours and 23 minutes and I'll go back and look at my Twitter page again just to see if there's any new news because there really is no desire to have a long Friday uh, Playco is hiring a product manager uh, according to Gamatsu NIS is telling you to pre-order their copies of Poison Control, whatever that is. Hmm. Lego tweeted about Lego Demigorgons and Stranger Things. Uh, I never got the Stranger Things upside down house. Um, so... Maybe they're going to come out with a, maybe a slightly cheaper set that makes more sense. Um, th there's been a couple of sets recently that are way too expensive. And... and so I, I don't know if this is an animation announcing a new set. Or if this is an animation just trying to advertise the set that already exists i think there's only been one stranger Things set and it was a lego ideas set so sometimes these lego ideas sets get 
uh, they're, they're starting to re-release them, and sometimes they get um, they get turned into a a more official set. Hmm. Yeah, that's like a Netflix Lego advertisement. Interesting. But what it seems like it's a um, a, a cross advertisement for products that really don't aren't out yet. Uh, the Star Wars Battlefront creative directive Dennis Brenneval is leaving Dice after eight years. That's not super surprising, frankly, for the as badly as Battlefront has been treated. Hmm. Grounded tops 5 million players under six months, so some people are still playing. Um, let's see. There's a job listing for Lost Words programming contract spec sketchbook. And I, I, I don't know what spec means in that case. Hmm. If you're under contract, you're under contract. It shouldn't be speculative. They're, they're looking to looking for programmers to port Lost Words beyond to the page to Steam, Xbox One, uh, PS4, and Switch. So they they want to bring those games to more other people, but they want to hire an individual programmer to do that instead of a third party. Um, third-party uh, porter company. Apparently, this is Poison Control. Whatever this game is. Um, possibly is in the region of these uh, Disgaea games. I think those, that's Disgaea. Yeah. And the Lego link, this isn't video game related, but is just a link to this tagged hard to find set. Yeah. For $200, it's it's kind of an expensive set, but it's very unique in that it is a upside down building in lego um even someone who i showed who knew nothing about uh stranger things and the upside down as a concept thought that there was a really cool design for lego um someone who was a big lego fan and would would be of some authority to talk about that all right well that covers all the news and that's pretty much all we needed to do except for possibly getting three more wins which in all fairness could take me three more hours so that's going to be it for this stream if i can figure out why i put my mouse it, it, it has gotten fairly hard to to maintain knowing where my mouse is with the weird uh l bracket shape that i've arranged my three monitors into uh Anyways, that's going to be it for the stream. As always, I ask you to like, share, subscribe, comment, and watch every second of my videos. If you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites, there's a whole bunch of links down below. And if you want to support me further, there's a link to Patreon, or you can friend me on Steam and gift me a game off my wishlist. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.